Hi, welcome to Mix and Jam, a channel about game development experimentation. In today's project, we're taking another look at The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. One of the rune abilities in the game is called Stasis, which allows Link to stop time on certain objects. He can then strike the objects, increasing their inertia and allowing them to be launched in any direction. My goal for this project is to try and build a similar effect using Unity. These are the steps I needed to follow to recreate the stasis ability. Create the collision of the character's weapon and determine the point where it hits on each object. Implement the time freeze mechanic on the current target and then work on the stasis shaders and effects. I've started by setting up the same third person camera control that the one in this tutorial made by Filmstorm. I downloaded some animations in Mixamo with sword and shield motions and implemented them to my character using Unity's animator. On Sketchfab, I downloaded models of the Helion Shield by Monoculture Studio, the Master Sword by Yogenzia, and applied them to my character. To make the sword detect the collision with other objects, I added a box collider to it and set the Is Trigger property on. Then, I created a script for the sword that uses the onTriggerEnter function to detect when the objects are overlapping the collider. In order to make the collision work only on specific frames of the motion, I enable and disable the sword collider using animation keyframes. When using onTriggerEnter, we can't really get the exact point of the collision. So to fix that, I use the raycast on the sword that will return the specific point of the collision. To start working on the actual time freeze mechanic, I use a raycast that origins from the camera's center and points forwards to detect objects in front of it. On the target object itself, I created a script that can enable the is kinematic property on its rigid body to freeze the physics simulations. Then I created a variable called accumulated force that increased every time the sword collided with the object. With that, I can simply add force to the rigid body using that property and taking the direction based on the object center minus the sword hit point. And to make things a little bit more visible, I added some basic particles to the sword collision. Now it was time to work on some shaders. Using Shader Graph, I use a color property to change the color of the material's emission that I can modify on my script to match the visuals on the game. Then, I added a Fresnel effect to the emission to make the edges of the object glow. To make the color more red as the force increases, I simply lerp the original color with my final desired color. There's also another effect on stasis that generates a noise pattern outline on the object. To replicate that, I use a sawtooth wave node to generate two noise patterns that get subtracted to one another, generating the outline emission. To indicate the direction in which the object is being launched, I created a simple cube and made it a child of an empty game object that will be the pivot that will use the transform.lookat at the launch direction. In the game, the arrow renders on top of the objects, so I found a shader on Unity's answer website by this user that allows that effect to be possible. Then I simply replaced the red cube with a simple arrow I modeled using Maya. It was time to add some particles, so I started by working on the graphics for the chains that are present on stasis and creating a particle system that would have a trail tiling that chain image. I also added more particles like the stretch lines, the burst emission, and the hit effect. For when the sword collides, I added particles that derive their color from the stasis shader. Then I added particles for when the stasis is over, like the chain release burst, some stretch lines, and another simple particle burst. I also added a trail render to the stasis object for when it gets launched. Finally, I added a terrain to play around on the scene 
and added some pause processing like bloom, depth of field, and some color grading. After a bit of adjustments, this is how it turned out. The link for the project's repository is on the description below. Mix and Jam is only possible because of every incredible person helping on Patreon, including these top tier supporters. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to check out the future projects. Thank you so much for watching.